Grand Rising Soul Fam. So according to the Gene Keys, right now we're in Gene Key 29. This is the shadow of heart, half-heartedness, the gift of commitment, and the city or the divine expression of devotion. And half-heartedness is so much to do with the seed, the intention that we start at the beginning with. And if that intention isn't in full alignment for the highest and greatest good, then it's going to have the implant of that distortion. Looking for the right words there. And so in order that we don't have a corruption of our data or distortion at the beginning, we have to be really mindful of our language and our intention. And so I wanted to share a wisdom story from the Wisdom Keepers deck by Dr. Rosie Aronson around this gene. I love these stories, there's imagery there, to give us just like a little wisdom through a personal story that these were collected and put through these alchemical journeys of finding the gift through the shadow through the challenge and then being able to speak through it which is to embody the divine essence of it and share it as medicine for the world right now as so many texts and people will say it's our greatest contribution is our regulated nervous system our most sacred contribution is our investment of our energy and just like we buy our things, we invest our vote, we put our time and our devotion and our energy into products and services, you know, we get to become really mindful around how we want to spend our energy and invest in our time. And, you know, in a low vibration, this gene can be the shadow of the fear of commitment. And yet so many of us are actually committed to that fear that we don't even realize we're on autopilot living out the paradigm with that fear embedded at the beginning. And so this is so much of what's collapsing right now is it's not the world is ending, it's the illusionary world is ending. That fear mongering world is coming to an end while people are waking up and recognizing that, oh, okay, this is a beginning. There's so much innovation happening. And at the beginning, there is a little bit of like trying to get the momentum and what are we doing and what systems and how do we do this? And so we all show up. That's all we do. We should we show up with a willingness to learn, with a care, with empathy, with compassion, with love. And just by that willingness, our showing up is so wholehearted that we are devoted and now we get all this divine intelligence that flows through us who is also devoted to that same awakening on the planet so here we go it starts off with a richard like quote that says a clear decision is felt as a quiet and powerful warmth that courses through your whole being whenever i think about truth truth for me is my life's work and also my brand it's not an intellectual fact, it's an embodied knowing. And so this powerful warmth that courses through our whole beating being, that is our knowing, our inner gnosis. Programming partner to this is rapture. So interesting about this divine essence is all return, all non-love returns to love. So everything goes back to the source. So then you go to the source and you meet up with everyone who's also returned to the source. So this can be like a whole village that's growing from this source. Okay, here we go. My wisdom story. My parents always called me the free bird. That was their sweet way of saying I was an unreliable flight. I was always flittering about from romance to romance, place to place, career to career, always starting when I couldn't finish. So when I finally found social work and a wonderful organization that suited me well, everyone was thrilled, including me. I worked there for years. 
I grew within the organization. I loved the population and I felt my life was meaningful. But after seven years, I found myself overcommitted, burnt out and disengaged. My heart yearned to be somewhere else doing something more creative. I wanted more space in my life for intimacy. My colleagues and staff had no idea how half-hearted I'd become about the job. I was lying to them and I was lying to myself. I was also terrified of leaving. They needed me and I certainly didn't want to risk quitting or failing or seeming unreliable. So I waited and waited. Each time someone dared to quit the agency to go after their dreams or other people's happiness or go after a dream, I felt jealous. Like I was on the sidelines watching other people's happiness while watching mine drift farther and farther away. To top it off, I felt even more trapped. Without me, who could train the new people? Finally, just as I spilled 16 ounces of coffee all over the giant pile of paperwork on my desk, it hit me. The timing would never be right. I could never guarantee that my next step would be a success, and I had no control over what others thought of me. Suddenly, a warmth ran through my body, and I knew what I had to do. The following day, I gave my notice. While I will always cherish my time working in that organization, I have not looked back, not once. I have no regrets. My gift to you. I am here to give you permission to say yes to life, to trust it fully. It's time to hold nothing back. Don't worry about what others think or expect from you. Beware of giving your power away to a teacher, guru, or a system. Fly brave and blind as you embark on your path. And remember, Few things are less healthy for you than half-heartedness. So whether you're succeeding or failing, do it with a full heart. Stand by your decisions. Trust the in-the-moment guidance. Honor the stream of your experiences and relationships until each cycle reaches its natural completion. Do these things and there will be no need to worry about the future, for the seed of your dreams lives in the heart of your commitment. It's all about the journey. <clears throat> Questions for contemplation. Where in your life are you overcommitted? Where do you feel like a slave or like you're being taken advantage of or abused? What in your life, a job, a relationship, a way of being needs to come to an end? What do you fear might happen if you honor and follow through with what you know to be true? Where are you lacking commitment? Where are you living half-heartedly? Are you saying yes, but then not following through? Is there a frustration, fear, or anger behind your seeming flakiness that you haven't fully owned? How can you more deeply commit to the needs of your soul? Think of a time in your life when you experienced devotion. Where in your life today are you satisfied with your level of commitment? Honor these experiences in your journal. There's this little birdie there. Hmm, thank you so much, Dad.